From the Bet MGM studio, this is the OTP with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We'll introduce this guy in just a minute if he needs an introduction. But thrilled to be joined through the technology and power of Zoom, Chris Johnson. Wait, there he is, CJ. <laughs> 2K. What's up? What's up? How are you? What's happening? Yes. I'm good. Just chilling. I'm good. I'm chilling. All chilling. Right. So we're going to talk about the 2008 Tennessee Titans, the team that had the great 10 and 0 start, 13 and 3 season, one of the best in Titans history. Chris Johnson was a rookie that year, and we remember his spectacular season. This guy also had a great season. This is Mr. Monday Night, Keith Bullock, and. It's important now, by law, we have to introduce him as Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer, Keith Bullock. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I appreciate that. Um, that was a <laughs> great time uh, last year. I was very surprised when I got that uh, induction. Um, also, it was right behind Javon Kurtz, who was another great tight end. Right. So it was Javon, myself. I feel this guy right here, CJ2K, should be on his way. I, I, do I have any juice to get him in there? You actually don't. No. 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 I mean, he could, he's trying for it. Hey, I'm trying my best. <laughs> okay. I might, you know. But no, well, it's, but, it's yeah. not. Keith can't do it. No, uh. but I actually, <laughs> I know someone who can do it. Who? Brad Willis. And well, we need to call he's Brad. He's actually the here. The executive director of the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a here. good time. He's here. He's here. Brad, could you come over here for a second? Look at this. Because you actually have <clears throat> juice. I do. Well, I, you have juice for the juice. The board of directors has the juice. Uh, <laughs> you know, and anytime you're surrounded by Tennessee Sports Hall of Famers, like 2021 inductee Mike Keith, 2023 inductee Keith Bullock, kind of gets you thinking about who's next. And so, CJ2K, we'd like to invite you to join the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame as part of the class of 2024. Ah, that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's dope. Hey. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate it, man. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm lost of words. All I can say is I appreciate it. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. I mean, that's the, that's the yeah. whole thing is we, we're really not going to talk about the 2018. No, this was a little a, bit of a trick. I'm a big liar. <laughs> so, y'all, y'all trick me. I can't, oh, boy, I can't wait to see you. Your birthday card, I can't wait. Y'all trick me good, man. Oh, my God. Brad Willis, it is a special class that you have introduced so far. It is, and we're rolling it out. Chris, you're part of a 12-member class that we're very excited to have. Uh, celebrating this summer, July 20th in Nashville. Um, just you know, Tennessee is such a rich sports history. And when we look back at, at some of the great Titans that have been in, inducted, and we, we start talking about the 2008 season and your record setting 2009 season. And just you just set the NFL world on fire, came in with such a, explosive plays. Uh, we really can't think of a better representative for the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame than, than Chris Johnson. So welcome uh, to the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. We're excited to uh, extend you the invitation and uh, really glad that uh, you're part of this great, great group. Congratulations, bro. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. I love Tennessee. I love the city, the organization, everything. I'm I'm so excited for this. And he belongs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, I remember when he did get here in 08 and in practice, you, you're like, where's the speed? Where's the speed? And then I'll never forget that Oakland Raiders preseason game uh, when that hole <laughs> opened up like the Red Sea. And some people got speed, some people are fast, but Chris Johnson always <laughs> showed he had the juice. So... That's my guy. <laughs> well, the amazing thing about Chris Johnson, six years with the Titans, 1,000 yards rushing in all six seasons. And he missed one game in those six years. Crazy. One game. And you were held out of that game, the season yeah. finale in Indianapolis, when the Titans had already clinched in 2008. So technically, you were never not available to play, CJ. And I know for... Nearly 8,000 yards rushing and 32 100-yard games and the 2,000-yard season. All of the things you're very proud of, but that durability was something you're really proud of, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and that's one thing I always pride myself on. And it's like no matter what you do, you can be the, the fastest guy in the world. You can be the strongest guy in the world. But if you're not available, none of that, none of that stuff matters. And I always pride myself on 
being able to be available, being durable and being there for my team when they need me. Um, I can remember my, I, yeah, my last year with the Titans, um, week two, I tore my meniscus and I had a chance to either go get surgery and miss the next eight weeks and come back healthy at the end. Or I can sit there and stay there and fight with my teammates and try to make a playoff run. And, you know, I decided not to get the surgery and play my last year, my whole last year with a torn meniscus. And it's just all about being available and being there with your team. And the perfect guy in that way, in terms of durability, reliability, and excellence to follow Eddie George, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think I said it last year, like our Mount Rushmore of running backs is uncomparable to any other organization. You know, they'd have a tough argument when you think about the running backs, um, obviously starting with Earl Campbell, then you have Eddie George, then you have Chris Johnson, and then Derrick Henry, who just finished it up. You know, um, these guys paved the way for what it means to be a Titans running back, and it's great to have CJ2K, um, you know, in this situation. Now, this is a brotherhood that he's about to be a part of, people who are in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, men and women, but it's, it's a real real big deal to be a part of this group of people. What does he have to look forward to? Oh, man, um, he just did the hard part. You know, Brad, <laughs> Brad is going to um, get in touch with him, let him know everything that it entails. Uh, the next hardest thing is maybe decide who all you're going to invite. You know, I think the Tennessee sports, they have a, do a great um, event. They have a great weekend. They have everything um, laid out for the inductees. So that's what I'm saying. All you got to do is show up. The hardest thing is probably for him deciding who he's actually going to invite because it is a great time. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, man, you get in touch with Brad. He's going to make sure. <laughs> you know, you got everything you need. So it's going to be a great week that was, for you. That was up. That's what's up. The Titans have quite a wing now, Brad Willis, of the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. They do, absolutely. Just within the last, you know, several years, Jeff Fisher, you, Javon Curse, Keith Bullock, Steve McNair, Frank Wycheck, Blaine Bishop, mm. Eddie George. I mean, the list continues and to Mr. grow. And Mr. Adams. And Mr. Adams. I mean, it's, it really is quite the collection of, of Tennessee Titans. And, you know, I really want to thank Keith for being a part of this. Keith, you know, a representative of the Titans organization in 2023. I kind of feel like it's like the best actor in the Oscars showing up <laughs> to, to give the best actor <laughs> award in the next year. But I uh, really appreciate him being a part of this. And uh, his class was a great class as well. You've been the executive director now for how many years? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. I think one of the things that has stood out to me getting a chance to host the dinner for several years, and I bet you agree with this, is how many of the inductees come back every year for the dinner. It really is, and it's turned into a great event just for you know the the, the sports community in in the mid state and the entire state. Actually, you know we we look forward to people coming back every year, getting to celebrate the new class, but also giving a tip of the cap to those who have been in before because it really is a great, as you said, brotherhood, a great family, and uh, we're really glad that that CJ is a part of this, that that you and Keith are a part of this, and that, you know mm -hmm. we continue to you know have a great relationship with the Tennessee Titans in that respect. I was thinking about a CJ game, and I was, and I go back to this one, Chris. November first, two thousand nine, against Jacksonville, where you and Maurice Jones-Drew sort of had mm. like a two-man game for 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 a while. Maurice Jones-Drew rushed for one hundred seventy-seven yards. Don't remind me. <laughs> he had two long touchdowns, oh, wow. and Chris had two hundred twenty-eight yards rushing. My and guy, two, two long touchdowns. Uh, set the franchise record that day. And that was the day where it became apparent. And I said this in the post game. I said, now this guy's starting to knock on the door that if he gets hot down the stretch, 2,000 yards is not out of the realm of possibility. Do you remember that day against the Jaguars, who, of course, are from your home state? <clears throat> Um, yes, I definitely remember that day because I, I even remember that week. That's probably like one of the the fast the fastest meetings that we had, the team meetings where you come in on um on Wednesday and Jeff Fisher just put it up on the board and he was like, Hey, at the end of the day, whichever one of you guys have the most rushing yards, that's who gonna win this game. And the meeting was over. <laughs> that's and it. You no know, pressure. Right then, I just knew it was gonna be a yeah, it's gonna be a heavyweight fight right there. Like it was going back and forth, back and forth, and I ended up on top and you know winning that game. Well, I'm glad you uh, took one for the for the team that day because the defense definitely didn't show up. <laughs> for you, as you watch the combine again this year, and you see players 
going after what technically is John Ross's record because he broke your 42440, not easy to say. Mm -mm. Um, do you watch that? Do you watch those guys going for the low figures? And could you have gone below 424? Man, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I used to watch it every year, but after my record got broke, I stopped watching it. <laughs> yeah, I stopped, I stopped watching it, and then, like, and not just because it got broke, because I kind of feel like it was some funny business going on with it, because, like, when they did the side-by-side, -side, I beat John Ross, but his time still beat mine. But at the end of the day, what made me so, um like, you know, records I meant to get broken, and you know I'm proud of these younger guys and stuff like that. But what a lot of people don't understand what makes my my forty yard dash so special is I ran my four two four at two hundred pounds. You look at all these guys; they like one sixty, one sixty five, right? Mm -hmm. One seventy. I'm thirty forty pounds heavier than than these guys. So that's why but, you, you know I'm proud of them. But it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah so yeah did you ever time below 424 at any other 40 that you ran at any point yeah in college my junior day um before my senior year i ran a 418 when the scouts came out i ran a 418 on um, that day or whatever and that's kind of what helped me get on the scene a little bit right there before my senior year but uh yeah it was it was pretty fast that day we ran it inside on a track <laughs> and you know what's impressive about him is this was not a track man running. This was a football player, a legitimate football player. Because I know, and they, and they show some of the track guys and how fast they could run the 40. I get it. But those guys are step over step yeah. over step. It's not, it's not cutting. It's not anything like that. It's a, it's a whole different sort of training. And for him to run that fast, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I, like I said, I was I, I heard about him. You know, we got the fastest guy in the draft, and then um, like I said, that one game he just turned it on, and then ever since then, you know, CJ was must see TV, one of the most electrifying players and dynamic. That's a word that's used a lot when you think of dynamic players. CJ2K is a diamond, the dynamic player that you I really think of when it comes to Titans um, offense. Well, and that's the thing. When you think about Titans offense, when you think about the Tennessee Titans in general, time after time after time, Chris Johnson's name comes up. We still see his jerseys all across yep. Nashville. When people talk about their best Titans <laughs> moments, their favorite Titans games, nine times out of ten, they're Chris Johnson plays. They're Chris Johnson moments. There are so many things that he's given to this organization and to the state of Tennessee in general. CJ, knowing that that's your legacy has got to be special, right? Yeah, it's definitely special with me. Like, with like a lot of people, they talk about the two thousand yards, the twenty five hundred. But like, like you can ask Bull. Like, what 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 gets to me is like when when I come back to Nashville and like me and Bull go out to eat or whatever. Like, people still treat us like we're playing for the Titans still today. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's crazy. Like to be retired for so long and still be able to come back there and still get that same treatment from the fence, the city of Nashville, the like wherever we're going to stores, the restaurants, or wherever we at, they still treat us like we play for the Titans. And like that's one of the best things. And people always ask me like like I played for Tennessee, I played for Arizona, I played for the Jets, and they ask me my favorite place and it's always Tennessee because not just the team, but the city, the organization, all of that, like, they treat us so well. Chris Johnson is with us. Brad Willis from the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame joins Keith Bullock, Amy Wells, and me on the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. Our friends at Farm Bureau Health Plans have been in business for 77 years. Chris, I do want to ask you one thing about 2009. Not only did you rush for 2,000 yards, but you had 50 catches for over 500 yards. You averaged over 10 yards a catch, which for a running back is unusual. Put up the huge total, over 2,500 total yards, the record. I think it's the greatest year in the history of running backs, statistically. I, I mean, you did it so many different ways is the 2,500-plus 
what you're most proud of about that year? Yeah, for me it is. Like, like it is because you have eight guys that have wrestled 2,000 yards. You have nobody ever in history to have over 2,500 total yards. And, and what's so crazy about it, um, what's so crazy about it, why I – do kind of understand why a lot of people kind of don't talk about it or kind of realize it. Cause even when I did it, I didn't even know I broke the record. Like I just knew I, I wrestled for 2000 yards that day. I didn't know that I had the record for the most scrimmage yards until the day after when I was doing the interview about the 2000 yards. And I forgot who I was having an interview with and they brought it up. And I was like, for real, why I broke Marshall Fault record. Um, so it was kind of crazy. I didn't even know I did it when I did it, but like for me to do that and for like when people talk about Hall of Fame and all type of stuff, it's like I don't see how I can be left out when I have the when I can say I had the best season for a running back in NFL history. No one has ever done what I done. Um, like you say, fifty catches, five hundred yards, and to have two thousand yards on top of that is it's amazing. That's why you put him in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you know, we could have done it just based on that, but there, there was so much more. And I, I want you to go back to East Carolina for a second. Wasn't there a moment in your college career where they thought, let's move Chris Johnson to wide receiver full time? Yeah, it was a moment. So when I came in, my first two years, I started at running back. And then my third year, I um like I think it was the second game of the season. I ended up hurting my toe. I had turf toe. So when I came, I missed like four weeks. And when I came back, um, they they wanted to move me to receiver because um the running back that we had in, he was having a pretty good year within those games that I was out. And when I came back, they wanted me to move the receiver in. When I think about it today, how today's game is, and you can play 15, 16, 17 years making $15 million a year. Hey, I should have gave it more thought. But, <laughs> I, I, I think you would get out. But at the end of the day, yeah, but at the end of the day, like back then when I was coming in, like to the draft and stuff, the, the game of football was different. It was the running back. The running back sure. getting 25, 30 touches a game. The game done changed. So, like at that time, I knew I was a running back. I knew that that's what I've been um, – practicing hard all my life for and that's what I wanted to do so you know the rest of that year I played some receiver and I played some running back and then came back my senior year and they moved me back to running back and that, that's where it went. Somebody made the mistake when you were drafted of saying to uh, the late great Mike Heimerdinger that oh you're you're bringing him in to be a gimmick back <laughs> to be, to be, you know, to be a guy who lines up all over the place. He goes, I mean, he was hot because <laughs> Heimerdinger yeah. was the guy who stood on the table for you. There were a lot of people who were for you, but Heimerdinger was certainly at the top of the list. And he said, Oh no, he said this guy is a an every down weapon in the backfield. Mike Heimerdinger believed in Chris Johnson, and it took that, didn't it? Yeah, it definitely did. And like, man, I, I still remember to this day, like anytime, anytime Mike, anytime Mike talked to me and told me to come to his office, it was like, dang, what I done did. I, 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 I did something, right? So this one particular day, he uh he like, yeah, after practice, come to my office. I need to talk to you. I'm like, and this was in um this was training camp, my rookie year. And I'm like, dang, what I done did now? Like, so he came in there, like, he told me that same exact story. And he was like, hey, you little mother, you little mother effer, hey, you better make me look good. Don't make me look bad. So, <laughs> so he told me about that whole situation. <laughs> All right, Chris Johnson, who is the first person that you are going to call and tell that you are being inducted into the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame on July the 20th? Um, my mom. Great. I'm going to definitely call my, yeah, I'm going to tell my mom, you know, my mom and dad, you know, they've been behind me since I was in Little League all the way through high school, college, making those long drives from Orlando all the way up to Greenville, North Carolina. So I'm definitely going to call my mom and my dad and let them know. All right. So 
I'm wondering, will Lindale White be the first former teammate you call? Well, my first former teammate is right here. On the yeah. 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 I'm glad I was able to be a part of it, man. You deserve it. But, I, but yeah. I'm just wondering if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got Smash and Dash, you know, do you call him? And Yeah, yeah. It definitely, yeah, I'm going to definitely let him know and, and, and definitely Vince Young, those two guys, for sure. All right. Amy Adams Strunk, the Titans controlling owner, and Chris Johnson have a special relationship, don't they? Absolutely. Chris, it seems like you're around all the time, and every time we see you in Nashville, Amy Adams Strunk is kind of around. You guys have really gotten to know each other throughout the years, right? Yeah, yeah, we have a, a whole lot, man. I tell people a lot of times I, I wish, like, um, you know, as RP the the bud uh, Adams, but like at the time when I was there, you know, he wasn't really around because you know he was going through his health issues and stuff like that. But I I could have wished like she was there because um, I really feel like I would have probably stayed with Tennessee a lot longer if Miss Amy was there because me and her, I, I feel like we would have established a relationship. Um, when I was there, like, I couldn't even really tell you many people from upstairs. I didn't have a relationship with anybody. So even when I was going through the things I was going through as far as, like, you know, contract negotiations um, and those type of things about staying with Tennessee or leaving, like, I really, I really had nobody that I could have had a conversation with. Jeff Fisher was gone. Um, he the one brought me in there. Mike Heimerdinger was gone. Um, so I didn't really have anybody that I could have a conversation with or sit down with or that I didn't even have anybody phone numbers to have those type of conversations with. So um, I feel like if she was there, I would have been there a lot longer and I would have had a better relationship with the upstairs. Mentioned that SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans now. Whatever you're doing in Nashville, whether it's Titans tickets or another event, SeatGeek is the place that can take care of you. SeatGeek, so... Titans fans can fan. All right, CJ, one more before we let you go on this special OTP. Give us your thoughts on the pairing of Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard for 2024 in the Titans backfield. Uh, man, I think it can be dynamic. If um, Tony, if Tony come in and do do the things that he was doing in Dallas, especially when he was there with Zeke, um, and if Tajay continue to do the things that he was doing when he got those opportunities to come in the game, um, both of those guys are talented guys. Both of those guys have some speed and and can definitely be dynamic. So if we can get a nice one two punch with those guys. Um, especially with us getting um, Kevin Ridley in there, uh, I think we'll be okay. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think it gives um, <clears throat> the defense a lot to, to worry about. I also like the moves that they made at center, getting a veteran uh, lineman to kind of anchor that. Uh, CJ just mentioned Calvin Ridley, so I think um, Coach is putting together a nice offense that is um, going to make defenses be on their toes even um, game one of the season. Okay, Chris Johnson, we're going to wrap it up here. So sorry to trick you. <laughs> Y'all got, got me good, I, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, we're very proud that the Titans are involved in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame induction dinner. Brad Willis, tell everybody again when that's going to go on and some details. Please. That's right. July 20th at the Omni Nashville downtown 2024 class. It'll be a great group. 12 inductees, including Chris Johnson, uh, a list of, of honorees from across the state, uh, amateur athletes. And it's a great weekend, a great event. Really looking forward to it. You can find out more about it on our website, which is TSHF. Dot net and we're super excited to have Chris Johnson, a man of many titles, <laughs> NFL Pro Bowler, All Pro, <laughs> record holder. Uh, we, we refer to him as Dynamic, yeah. CJ2K, <laughs> and now Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, you're excited about Scott Hamilton being at the dinner too. Well, mostly Chris Johnson. <laughs> well, I mostly, mean, okay. But yeah, also Scott Hamilton. He's also excited. But there are a lot of great names in this yeah. class and a couple more to come, I think, right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. more to come. Keep an eye on what Brad Willis is doing. 2023 Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer, Mr. Monday Night. Keith I'll be Bullock. there for uh, CJ's too. Thank so. you very much. For Brad Willis, for Keith Bullock, for Amy Wells, and for 2024 Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer, Chris Johnson, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining all of us for the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go. Everybody knows.